Hi, I'm Brittany Riley, and you're in the kitchen with Britt. We're here at Home Appliance in Avon, and in Ohio, it's strawberry season. So we're using up some of our fresh picked and then combining them with some store-bought, just um, kind of for stability, because sometimes those fresh picked start to go pretty quick, but we have lots of them. And um, I actually wanted to show you guys, too, this is a gadget. I don't usually like gadgets, but this one's amazing. You just open it up and then you can twist to get the top off of your strawberries. You don't lose all of that from cutting off the tops. Um, I used to remember like when I would be making jam with my mom and my sisters when we were younger. And my mom had this little tool where you kind of like stabbed it in and pulled out the top um, just to avoid losing, especially on like the fresh picked. I mean, they're smaller a lot of the time and to get in and cut off the top, you're losing almost half the berry sometimes. So we'd be going in and doing that. And you don't notice, but those little hairs that are kind of on there, after there's like a thousand of them that go into your thumb. Oh my gosh, I remember my thumbnails hurting so bad for like two or three days after that. So this is a nice replacement for that tool. Um, but basically we are macerating a bunch of strawberries which if they're doing that kind of while you're baking your um, shortcakes, it's perfect. Macerating just means that they will naturally soften in liquid. So the only liquid is there's some brown sugar stirred into here and we're gonna zest some lemon and then just put just a tiny bit of juice, but it also kind of draws out um, some of the juices from the strawberries over time. So letting that sit for a little bit. I use a little less, uh, sugar than most people would in this just because especially with the um, fresh local ones when you're in season they're so sweet I don't want to add much sugar to that my kids would disagree maybe but so a little lemon zest and then just a little juice I would say maybe like a teaspoon of juice per cup and a half of berries because you don't want to overwhelm it and make it too tart or anything and then while that's kind of sitting we'll make our shortcakes and you know they can be made all sorts of different ways a lot of um, traditional ways of making a shortcake involve um, making a dough that we roll out and fold and cut in with like a biscuit cutter that has beautiful layers so we can just basically pull it apart to separate it I'm kind of going with um, more of like a drop shortcake it goes a little bit quicker a few less steps no rolling no mess um, so I kind of like that um, but basically, we are going to be using cold butter. You want to cut it into cubes, and then we work it in kind of like almost like a sweeter biscuit dough. And then once it comes out of the oven, what we'll be doing is just cutting them in half to make our little layers. So I'm going to cut up this butter, and we'll come back and make our shortcake dough. So as with biscuits, we get kind of our butter chunks in, and then we want to work them into small pea-sized pieces. I use my hands. Um, you can use a pastry blender if you have one and if you like that method, but I think it's just quicker and easier to crush it all up. Um, a couple things generally, even with a shortcake, um, it's recommended flavor-wise to use like a buttermilk. Um, it gives it that tang and it helps with our reaction actually. So we're using a lot of baking powder in this and so baking powder with an acid gives us a good rise. So I don't always have fresh buttermilk on hand and it doesn't necessarily need to go on your shopping list either if you're making something with buttermilk. Um, unless you have another use to finish it off, I don't like to have stuff go to waste. So one way that you can kind of um, substitute is basically a teaspoon of white vinegar per cup of milk. So <laughs> you can see, I don't know if you can, it's kind of thickened a little bit, a little gelatinous almost, because when you add an acid to a dairy product like that, um, it reacts and it kind of gels up. That's how we make cheeses and things like that. Um, so basically we've made sour milk. We'll get that same exact reaction, same exact flavor pretty much um, by being able to do that. So once you have all your chunks broken down, we are gonna pour that buttermilk in. And the key to a really good short dough, um, biscuit, shortcakes, whatever it is that you're making, is handling it 
like as little as possible once you add that liquid. Um, we are not trying to develop gluten, but we also don't want to warm up this butter. So on that note, we are using a hot oven, it's 425. So basically these little chunks of butter, before they even have a chance to completely melt, they'll be hit with that heat and be able to create a steam pocket, which is how we get those flaky layers. All right, enough science. We're just trying to have a shortcake, right? <laughs> All right, so this is pretty well broken down. If you have some bigger chunks, don't worry about it. It's just gonna be a really good bite. And then we are going to pour this in. Like I said, just kind of work it all together. If you're worried about it, you can switch to a spatula at this point, but <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty messy as it is. So I'm just gonna literally toss it together. And once that's done, we'll drop whatever size you want. You know, you can make really nice, small individual size. You can make some bigger ones. Your bake time will just increase if they're larger. And I'm gonna mix this up. We'll get them on the tray. And then I like to put some um, coarse ground sugar over the top just to add a little bit, because this really doesn't have a lot in it. We didn't add a lot to our berries, but that little extra note of sugar on the top is nice. All right, while our shortcake is baking, we'll make some whipped cream. So I've just got some heavy whipping cream in here. Um, basically my rule of thumb is one cup of heavy whipping cream to two teaspoons of vanilla extract to one and a half tablespoons of sugar. Um, then you can you know, multiply from there if you want to double, triple, whatever. I um, tripled, I think, for this. <laughs> um, so keep your cream really cold. Pull it straight from the fridge to the bowl. That will um, give it the most stability and get the nicest peaks on it. And basically, I mean, if you're able, you know, if you have a whisk attachment and a mixer, that's your best bet. If not, you can do a hand mixer or you can always use a whisk. It just takes a little bit longer, but it's really not that bad. Um, so this, I mean, for the amount that I'm doing, especially, it's gonna be three to five minutes, just depending on how fast I crank it up. Um, if you're used to doing it or if you're gonna be right next to it, you can totally crank it basically all the way up once it's um, past its like full liquid form and just keep an eye on it. But if you're gonna be walking away or you haven't made whipped cream all that many times, I would suggest letting it go a little bit longer but at half speed, that way you don't over whip. Because basically if we kind of go past the perfect point, it starts to thicken until all of a sudden it does separate and you're basically making butter at that point or like vanilla sweetened butter and it's really not what we want. But um, I'm gonna let this go for about three to five minutes.